everyone, welcome back to Show Me How to Win. We're visiting Gamma Expo and we are checking out Kubitos. Next to me is Todd. Todd is the marketing director at AEG. Todd, Kubitos, you guys just announced it this morning at Gamma. It's one of your new games that's coming out. We're checking out the prototype right here. It looks really good. So, why is it called Kubitos? I see a little cheese block there and everything else here has like a little theme going on. Tell me what's the story behind this game. Okay, so as the game was being developed, we realized we were going to have these little dice, as you can see here, and we wanted to have containers for the dice, so we ended up making boxes within box. So it became a little cube within another cube within another cube. And as Vlad, one of our workers, uh, pointed out, that a cubito is the Spanish word for a little cube. Right. And so it was a little cube inside another cube, which was going to be inside another box as well. So that's how we ended up with the name. Squares and squares and squares. Exactly, exactly. Okay, cool. So, it's a dice game. Mm -hmm. It's an AG game. Your your boss like rolling dice, so I can see why this game was picked up. So I, those of you who don't know, Z is obsessed with rolling dice. Give us a little bit more about that. Okay, yeah, Z really loves his dice games. Uh, he loves space base. He loves all those kind of dice games, especially the ones that have a little bit of push your luck yes. in them, which this game has in spades. It's yes. very much a game about pushing your luck. Perfect. Tell us how to play. Okay, so in a nutshell in Cubitos, it is a racing game. It's a dice game, but it's also a racing game. You have your little uh, figures, your little racers, one for each player, and you're attempting to get from the start line to the finish line. Now, there are four different maps that all have different strategies, but they all uh, revolve around completing the race. Being the first one to the finish line is how you win. So there's no like having the most money or any points like that. It's just get to the finish line. How do we move? Okay, so when you when you have a turn, you're going to roll your dice, and some dice will have a what looks like a little foot on them, a little foot symbol that represents movement. And when you have those, like for instance, you had one right here, mm -hmm. little foot symbol. When you're done with all your rolling for the turn, which I'll talk about in a moment, however many of those you have, that's how many spaces you get to move. Okay. Um, so on your turn, you're going to roll all your dice, and as long as you roll at least three, you're good. If you didn't roll three, you get free rerolls until you get three dice so faces. So say I only roll these two, I get to reroll all these dice? Exactly. You get to reroll the whole pool again. So let's say you end up with uh, this. Now you have an interesting option because now you can choose to push your luck. If you want, you're going to pick these up again and try and roll them again. In this case, I did not get anything. And if you don't get anything, you lose your entire turn. Now. That's sad. Yeah, it is sad, but there's a good side. The fans of this race really love the underdog. So whenever that happens, you have a matching uh, figure here that gets to move along the fan track. You pick up more fans. Okay. What's good about that is every so often, you reach one of these little hand symbols and that lets you roll more dice in your pool. So when you get to here, you'll be rolling 10 dice a turn and then 11 dice a turn and 12 dice a turn. So even though you're busting, you're getting some good ways to catch up. So the sympathy roll. The sympathy vote, basically. Yeah, it's the whole crowd going, oh, come on, you know? We're going to help you out. Right, exactly. Okay, so um, now what do we do with, you talk about the fee, we get to move with it. What about the, the symbols here? So I assume everybody start with the same pool of gray dice, right? So now I have a couple of symbol number one here. I have two dollars. Mm -hmm. You have two uh, money, or two dollars as you'd say. And then you get to look at these other dice, which are the unique dice with different abilities. So for instance, um, with these two, you could afford to buy Mr. Dog, who costs two. In that case, you would take one of his dice and put it in your discard, which is where all of your dice are gonna go at the end of the turn. And eventually you'll be able to add Mr. Dog to your pool and start rolling the tan colored dice. Um, the reason you do that is that these cards all have different abilities and different effects and that's how you sort of build your dice pool for different strategies throughout the race. So it is like a dice, dice building game where um, you know you add to your pool the better abilities and then you can customize sort of how your dice pool go. Exactly, exactly. You're going to be able to remove some dice in certain ways, add others, and uh, get re-rolls and all different so kinds of effects. Okay, so I buy the little doggy dice, I put it in this card, right? Mm -hmm. And now what do I do with these dice? Okay, so the ones you used also go to your discard. Okay. The ones you did not use go to an area called roll, and you have to use those on your next turn. So you'll use at least those, and then you'll be able to add other dice up to nine. Okay, so for example here, I use 
three dice. I started with nine, so I have I bought one right here. So now I have six dice to roll. I can choose out of the four dice in the discard which ones I use. Right, which three get back into the pool. And then the one that you didn't pick, like let's say we put the dog in, we put those in, it would stay in your draw, which would mean you'd be using it on a future turn. All right, so as I buy more dice, I will have more of these uh, dice that will stay in the draw pile. And then maybe it'll stay there until it's a perfect moment to use it. Right, exactly. You can pick and choose which ones get into your roll to begin that turn. Okay. So now we know how to play. Basically, the, the person who uh, gets to the finish line first wins, right? Correct. Now, when that happens, do everybody gets one more turn or is that just first come? That's it. No, that's it. You're done. Like, and then if you, if you begin your turn, say like right here near the end and say you get to move eight spaces, you get to go two and then you continue moving an additional number from the other end. So if anyone is able to overtake you okay. before the game officially ends, then it's done. Yeah. Okay. I see. All right. So, um, we know how to play now. Let's talk about how to win. So obviously in a dice building game or car building game, whatever the power of the cards are, are very important. So let's start by talking about that. What are some of the dice you, some of the colors that you recommend we get at the beginning of the game? So uh, I want to point out that um, there are many cards to, many different versions of a car, color, right? Just like in Tiny Town. So can you tell, tell us a little about these? Yeah, sure. So like you say, there are multiple ones. So when you begin to look at how to win, you have to kind of take into account the different abilities you're going to have, the different maps, and kind of work those together. But in general, each color of dice does some style of mechanic. Okay. So early in the game, the dog cards tend to be good, or the dog dice tend to be good. Now the thing is, when they activate, they usually give you a really good effect, but then they are discarded. They go back to the, the cube tower here. Wait, so you, you lose them. You mean I lose my dog? You lo you do lose your dog, but the dogs are inexpensive, so you can pick up another one almost right away. But the point is, it goes away on its own after being used because it gives you a quick boost of a one shot, which is great in the early game because it can often push you into getting the other dice you need sooner, and so you can keep getting those. Uh, another good one for early in the game are the green dice because the green dice are sort of focused around keeping you from busting. They have different effects that may protect you from uh, rolling all blanks. Um, it'll give you more chances to hit on different symbols and things like that. And that tends to be important early too because trying to push and trying to get that extra little bit is really important to getting your engine going in the early game. What about the orange dice? Okay, so the orange dice tend to be really good economy dice. They tend to either uh, give you money or they give you uh, some of these little symbols which are... I don't know if I can get one, which are basically bankable money. Like okay. this gets to stay in front of you until you are ready to use it, turn over turn, which can you can save up, you can get more of it, and then be able to buy the more expensive cards. I thought the dog dice also do that, right? The dog dice can do that. They both can provide money in different ways. So, but the difference is your orange dice don't remove themselves after being used. They're going to continue to go back in your pool. That's why they're a little uh, more expensive. I don't, I don't lose my orange. Right, the orange is going to stay with you. So. Okay, so maybe the brown one, the orange one, and the green one is good for beginning of the game, Very right? Okay. Now, what about the other ones? Uh, do they relate to the maps specifically, or do they relate more to like certain situations? Uh, some do. So, like for instance, if we look at the blue here, blue tends to have abilities that interact with the map in different ways. So, for instance, the one that's showing right now, uh, when you roll it and it comes up with the peace sign symbol that's on it, you're going to get three money, but then you're also going to get a free movement and that movement in this case can be used to move into or out of a water space which can give you a little bit of a shortcut because you can cut through the water instead of going around the water by using these blue dice there's another version of the blue card that will let you get the rewards of a space that's within two spaces of where you stop so you don't necessarily have to go to some of these reward spots you just have to be close to them as you're making your path around so even if it's blue, it's not always about water? No, it won't always be about water. Blue is more about interacting with the board in a different way. Because I want to show you guys, if we look at the other side of this uh, map, this is the second map, and there's not that much water here. But in this case, uh, you might get a different set of blue cards that deals with not water. But if you have this card, for example, then maybe it's not so useful, like the one that deals right. with water in this map, right? Right. But even so, 
And while that's true, even so, uh, in this case, let's say you were right here. Mm -hmm. Normally it could take you one, two, three, four, five movement to get around that bit of water. If you had a blue, you could just cut through and say one, two, three, four, five, and be a little bit farther along by skipping over it. So it can still be useful in this situation and when it comes up, maybe not as useful on the heavy water map as it would be on the heavy water map. But, yeah. Ah, so maybe you buy it early. Mm -hmm making a weight in the draw pile and then wait until the, when you're about to roll past the water, then you use then that die. you reach for that one. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I see, I see. So the timing of when you use the dice is also very important too. It is, it, it really is. And getting that proper set in your pool, because you know with a dice game, nothing's guaranteed. You could end up rolling an entire set of nothing, but... Oh, trust me, I know. <laughs> do you know that better than most? <laughs> but yeah, but still giving yourself that better chance is what's important. Uh, what about the red dice? That's my favorite color. Oh, red dice are fun. So red dice are the closest thing to combat that we have in the game. Now, there's no direct, like, messing with your opponent and knocking them back, but the way it works is when you roll your red dice, on that round, whoever rolled the most of these little swords gets the effect of the red dice. So it's a bit of a competition in that regard. In this case, when you roll it, you lose it, kind of like you did with Mr. Dog. This one goes away, but but here's the trade-off. On your next round, you get to draw and roll all of your dice, no limit. So if you've collected 17 dice at this point, you get to roll all 17 for your next round. So it's a huge swing just for having uh, given up the one die. Also really a timing thing, but you can't really plan for it. To an extent you can if you want to leave the red in your draw pile and not add it to your pool, like you were saying, until that moment when you're like, okay, I know by next turn I'm going to really need to hit as hard as I can. And that usually comes later in the game when people are getting near the end and you know you've really got to make up a lot of ground to catch up with the leaders. Um, is there a color that's good when you're falling behind? Yes, in fact, there can be um, because there are some that have extra movement because when you're falling behind, movement becomes very important. Um, you do get, and I'll mention this, you do get some additional catch-up mechanisms on the board. There's some spaces that are like portals that can let you jump from one place to another if you can land on them and do it. But the yellow cards tend to be ones that can give you a lot of movement, the cheese. But the problem is the cheese is cheesy. Tell me how. Tell me how they're cheesy. He gives you the extra movement, but by using him, he also forces you to push again that turn. So you have to attempt to reroll again after that, which then could cause you to bust, and you'd lose the whole turn. So it's a bit of a risk-reward using the cheese. It could be moldy. You never know. If you can't handle the cheese. Right. If you can't handle the cheese, don't mess with the cheese. Can you get some green dice to help with that? You can, because in fact that's a great combo, because since the green dice protect from busting and give you more options to avoid busting, you pair that with the uh, cheese and then you'll be able to get the... What? Green cheese? You've never eaten... Don't eat the green cheese. I'm just thinking like, because I'm lactose into intolerant, so that's like the lactose pill for me. I gotcha. Yeah, it would be. It would be like your lactate. You'd be in great shape. So. <laughs> All right, we haven't talked about the purple die. What does it do? So the purple die is the dinosaur. Now it has usually, in most cases, it has the most built-in movement of any dice in the game. Yeah, but it's twelve bucks. It's twelve bucks, and only one side actually has a symbol, so you only have a one in six chance of hitting. But usually, by the time you can afford the twelve die, you're rolling so many dice on a turn, and you're getting so many chances at rerolls. You've got a pretty good chance of hitting it on your turn. So. Is there one that gives you reroll? Um, there is. There are a couple in the mix that do in different colors, but not necessarily on the ones we have showing. But there are some that can give you additional reroll. And plus, you get to reroll anytime you want. Uh, so, yes. Unless right. you bust. Right. So. Right. There's that. So um, okay. So I also noticed that there are some areas on the board that's marked so what are these for okay so those are special areas you can interact with so for instance the ones that have a number on them they give you this bankable money so if you stop on that space you're going to get five if you stop on that space you're going to get two the little flags are fans so if you stop on that space you get a free move on the fan board and then a couple of others, um, this with an X and a cube is lose a cube. So if that happens, you can take one of your gray dice that are kind of the least valuable and remove them entirely. They are not even part of your pool anymore and they're out of the game. That's a good way to sort of call your dice because we all know at 
in any deck building, dice building games, you want to get rid of your least powerful dice, right? Is there not a way we can do this? Yes, there are some card effects from other dice that will allow you to do that. Um, the main reason to do that is that by visiting these, you can definitely customize yourself, but it's a, again, it's a risk reward in your strategy because you're spending more time, you know, piddling around doing all these, whereas the other players are maybe racing on ahead of you. Um, but what's really fun about these spaces, is, oh, there's also the portal. So if you go onto a portal, you pay the money and you get to jump to the opposite end portal. Now, what's really fun about these boards is that every board has at least one of what we call the hidden strategy, the secret strategy, if you can figure it out on the board. Now, this is show me how to win. Can you right. share your one secret about this one board? For your viewers at home, and only for your viewers, okay, we'll spoil just the one okay. on this map. So, if you notice, this portal is relatively easy to activate. It only costs eight coin to activate, which isn't that much. But at that point, you end up on an island. Now, to get to the other one through that portal, it costs 15. 15 is not a small amount of money. Now, what's great about it, though, is by doing this jump, you bypass that entire area. So it's really valuable. Now, if you look at the map, you might find a way to have 15 money ready when you get there. Because if you notice, there's five there, five there, three there, and two there. Which, if we do our first grade math, we find out that that is 15. And that is also in the form of the bankable money. So you're going to be able to keep that and be ready for it when you get to that space. So if you hit all those spots, you really only have to prepare for eight bucks. So because you need eight and then 15 to be able to do it. Exactly. Uh, in two rounds. Exactly. And by the time you've made it this far, you should easily be able to get eight out of it. All right. So, and that's kind of like a, another built-in me catch-up mechanisms you have, you guys have. Because if you're a front runner, you probably don't have time to stop at all these spaces. Right. Because the farther you get ahead, the game naturally gives the other players a lot of catch-up. So, once you kind of get in the lead, you've really got to try to push to finish, right? You want to focus on movement. You don't want to worry so much about money. You want to use everything you can to get as many of the feet symbols and finish that race. Because if you don't, they're going to catch you and pass you in, in a blink of an eye in this game. What's a what's a good? Uh, what are some of the colors that are good for the front runners to get? Okay, so the front runners obviously want to focus on movement. So things like the cheese, the dinosaur, the big heavy movement ones, and then maybe and you know green is good all around, but especially for them when they're needing to reroll to make sure that they're getting their movement results to come up, so they can get on ahead. But they also, the more farther ahead, the more, because you're, it's, there's like a little red lines here, depending on how far you're behind, you get to roll that many more dice too. Right. So for instance, if the lead runner is two of the red lines ahead of you, you get two additional dice in your pool. So if you're normally rolling nine dice, you now have 11, which is of course going to give you more ability to catch up. And when the front runner extends their lead even more, it gives you even more dice to catch them up. But that's why I was saying, if you are in the lead, you kind of have to go at a breakneck at that point and just try to get the game over with or but then the problem comes in that the leader's going to end up busting more because they're going to be trying to push to get all those movement symbols and it's sort of, sort of a self uh, correcting yeah. thing in the game yeah. okay so in general at the beginning go for the brown one the orange one maybe the green one because the green one is also good for end game right but you want to yeah and you want to get those credits early so mm -hmm. if you are using them to get better dice later or maybe use them for the portals right right exactly right. Mm -hmm. and then make sure you pay attention to the maps depending on where you are sometimes it's good to get certain dice and get them ready to make a leap across it right yeah you definitely have to plan out your race it's not a oh i'm just going to start and see what happens and then hope you win you really have to look at the map for a minute take a look at all the cards and figure out okay what are the dice i'm going to need and what order do i need to focus on getting them so now my favorite animal the kitty, yes, we like the that. white one. What do they do? Okay, so I mean, cats are not very helpful. <laughs> this one can be if you treat it right. Okay. Uh, so the cat tends to be a um, sort of a, a synchronicity in the game. It likes other colors. So, for instance, in this case, Dope Cat, who's right here, and yeah. I don't know who named him that, but it's Dope Cat. <laughs> um, he says, if you roll it and it comes up with the little kitty symbol, mm -hmm. 
if you also have a tan die, which is the dog showing a symbol, you would get two extra money. And then it also says if you have a green die, which is a pineapple showing a symbol, you get three extra money. So in that case, if you rolled all three of these and you got them all, you would get five extra money. So the cat just kind of works better as you built your pool. And as your pool is a bit more diversified in colors, the cat tends to work better. It has like a, a few buddies that it likes to hang out with. Right, exactly. And the cat also has two sides that are just movement. So it's also not a bad movement one. It only gives you one, but hey, it's better than a bust. Okay, so the cats are helpful in this game. Cats are helpful in this game, which is really weird. But again, and it's the an dog awesome and the dog leaves you. It's really the dog runs off. Yeah, yeah, the dog it runs off. Should be the opposite. Uh, well, you know, you got to take that up with the developers. So, okay, I'm gonna have a word with Zhang. Good, you do that. <laughs> Is Josh one of the developers too?、Uh, actually, Josh did help on this. This was a developed.、Uh, John Goodenough was the developer on this. He's、uh, developed a lot of our games for us. But yeah, you guys have three Johns in your company. We have three Johns in our company. That's why the owner is Z.、Uh, John Goodenough is Goody, and John Clare is John Clare. Both of them together, John Clare. Must be very confusing when they're all in Larkstone. Yes, it can be very, very confusing. All right, so this is just a prototype. When can we actually get this game in our hands? Okay, so you know everybody's having to bear in mind the conditions of shipping right now and things like that. But we're hoping for、uh, Q3 of this year.、Uh, if not, then it will definitely be Q4. So it will be t-、uh, 2020.、Uh, we're just still waiting for the factories to see when we'll be able to get everything. So hopefully after Gen Con. Yes, after Gen Con. Okay, cool. Well, Todd, thank you so much for showing me how to play,、yes. how to win, Kubitos. Kubitos. And thank you guys for watching. Bye.